Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is In the family below, two brothers have classical hemophilia, assume that I4 and I4 is here uh, has two healthy sons. In that case, you can use Bayes' theorem to figure out that uh, her chances of being a carrier is and you have to choose a correct answer here. As usual, I recommend you to pause video here, try to solve this problem on your own first and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So first of all, let's uh, find out what we know about uh, this pedigree. Uh, hemophilia is um, X-link recessive genetic disorder, so we know that two brothers here have defective X chromosome. I would use red color to designate this uh, defective X chromosome and of course because these two persons are males another sex chromosome would be Y chromosome and what we can tell about uh, genotypes of these two females uh, let's add their parents to this pedigree so mother and Father. So how how do you think uh, from which side these uh, two brothers got uh, the defective X chromosome? Uh, males always get from father side Y chromosome, and X chromosome they are getting from mother side. That gives us information that the mother is heterozygous, has one chromosome that is defective and one chromosome that is normal and father has normal X and Y chromosome. So now you see that uh, any male progeny in this uh, family uh, has 50% chances to get normal uh, X chromosome and 50% chances to get defective X chromosome. So as for the uh, these two females, uh, they can get whether this defective X chromosome from mother side or this normal chromosome from their mother side. As for the father side, they can get only normal X chromosome. So uh, female, this um, particular female, can be uh, heterozygous. If she is going to get um, this defective X chromosome from other side, or homozygous normal, but in both cases her phenotype would be normal because this is X-link recessive genetic disorder, and uh, we know that she has one normal X chromosome inherited from the father side, and this is enough for her uh, phenotype to be normal. But probability of her to be a carrier would be one half and probability to be homozygous normal would be also one half. As for the uh, this female, the situation is the same. She can get from her mother defective X chromosome and normal chromosome from the father side and she also can get uh, normal X chromosome from the mother side and normal X chromosome from the father side. So once again probability would be one half and one half. As for the genotype of her husband, as you see phenotype is normal. That means that he has normal X and Y chromosome. We also know that uh, this uh, couple has two uh, phenotypically uh, normal sons and now we have to answer the question how this additional information would help us to find out her probability or how this additional information would affect uh, probability of this female to be uh, a carrier or to be homozygous normal. Imagine uh, that one of the sons would be affected, so how this information would uh, affect probability of her, of his mother to be a carrier. Now we can tell that uh, this 
male got one defective allele and of course that means he got this defective allele from mother side so we uh, would change this probabilities that his mother is um, uh, carrier and we, we will put here 100 percent but how uh, our calculations would be affected if we would know that uh, this uh, couple have two unaffected sons um, you of course uh, understand that the more unaffected uh, children this couple would have the more uh, likely that this female is not a carrier the more likely that she is homozygous normal but how uh, this uh, additional information would influence um, calculations of uh, this female probability of this female to be homozygous normal I'm going to explain you uh, right now so we have two assumptions that this female is um, heterozygous this is first assumption and the second assumption is that she's homozygous normal and our prior knowledge so prior knowledge uh, tell us that probability of her being carrier would be one half and probability of her to be homozygous normal is also one half so this is going to be probability of the event A and this is going to be probability of the event B so uh, next uh, row we have to include information uh, of what is the probability uh, of this female to have uh, two unaffected uh, sons if she is a carrier if this female is a carrier probability to have a son that is unaffected would be one half and one half so we have to multiply so this is conditional probability and it is uh, one half and one half for the second child so we multiply these two independent probabilities and we are getting one quarter so if female is heterozygous her probability to have unaffected two sons so normal x and y genotype here would be one half for the first child and one half for the second you may ask why I do not include probability for this couple to have uh, a son so one half probability to have a son plus uh, one half probability that son would be unaffected because this is uh, a fact that has already happened we are not uh, talking about something what if they would have and what if uh, the children would be unaffected we already know that they have two sons and the sons unaffected so we do not include probability for this couple to have a boy or a girl this is already known and uh, information that already happened uh, facts so now let's find probability what would be probability to have two unaffected uh, sons if this female is homozygous normal of course if she is homozygous normal her um, husband is normal that means that uh, probability to have two unaffected sons would be 100 percent we can say uh, one over one we can say one or we can say 100 percent so uh, next row uh, we have to find joint probabilities so joint probabilities of uh, two events uh, first our prior 
and conditional probability. So we have to uh, multiply these two probabilities in uh, our first example uh, probability for this female to be a carrier is one half and we have to multiply by the probability of having two unaffected children which would be uh, one quarter uh, sorry not children two unaffected sons and the answer would be one eighth and here in this column so let me separate these two columns so and uh, here in the last column we uh, have to multiply one half probability for female to be uh, homozygous normal uh, by the probability to have two unaffected children and this equals to one so multiply it by one and we are getting the same number one half and uh, the last uh, the last uh, calculation would be to add uh, to add final uh, calculations or uh, posterior so final or posterior and here is a formula uh, probability of event A we divide by the probability of the event A plus probability of the event B and here on the right uh, we have the same formula but probability of event B divided by probability of event B plus probability of event A. So we have all the numbers here so we just can put um, oh sorry I forgot uh, joint probabilities so joint probabilities so uh, joint probability of event A is one eighth. So let's put um, this information in our calculation. So joint probability of event A is one eighth divided by one eighth plus one half. This is joint probability of event B. And one eighth here and here in order to add these two fractions we have to multiply this one by four so one eighth plus four eighths would give us um, would give us one eighth divided by five eighths and now one eighth we have to multiply uh, by eight fifths and we cross out this same numbers and we are going to get one fifth here so one fifth or 0 0.2 or 20 percent is a uh, new probability for uh, female female uh, here to be heterozygous not one half as we assumed before but one fifth and because we have two variants here whether this female can be heterozygous or homozygous and uh, these two variants represent 100 percent of all probabilities uh, of all variants that means that uh, probability of her to be homozygous normal would be not one half but would be four fifths or we can say probability of her being a carrier equal to 20 percent and her probability of being homozygous normal equal to 80 percent and let me return to my formula here uh, final
calculations. Uh, as you see, because we know that we got here 20%, if we would uh, put uh, all the numbers here, joint probabilities of event uh, B equal 1 half divided by 1 half plus joint probability of event B, uh, event A, sorry, which is 1 8. We are going to get 4 fifths here or 0 0.8 A or 80 percent. So uh, this two numbers when we add should um, give us 100 percent. So when we return to our problem here now uh, we can give an answer probability of this female uh, to be a carrier equals to 20 percent which is answer B and once again uh, this is we did all the calculations using base theorem uh, the theorem uh, basically um, give us correlation between additional information for example in our case uh, information additional information was that this couple where female has 50 to 50 percent probability of being carrier or being homozygous normal already have two unaffected children and as you see uh, this information influenced uh, likeliness of her to being carrier or uh, to be a homozygous normal. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.